So uh, anyone that's actually tuning in right now, my name is Brent. I'm the host for Canadians with Disabilities and Their Allies. And today I have Chantel and Tracy joining me. This is greatly appreciated of your time today. They're from, uh, well, if I get this wrong, please correct me, but... Tracy, I think, was the main person for BC Ed Access, but you, Chantel, are the the president of BC Ed Access. Am I correct? Very close. Okay. Very close. It's confusing <laughs> <laughs> because we did change a little bit, right? Me and Tracy have been working together with BC Ed Access since its inception. Tracy is founder and was chair for many, many years and is now executive director. And I've moved to treasurer on the board of directors for BC at Access. And I just recently started my own nonprofit called ADHD Advocacy Society of BC. Yeah, it's, it's a great pleasure having both of you on. And this is a very, very important topic with BC at Access. I mean, there's so much that, that you do to reach out to make things better for people. The awareness of all the inadequacies that are in our education system for uh, students that, that have ADHD. It is definitely a very well-known disability, but it's really not spoken about a lot misdiagnosed mm -hmm. actually from so many people that that have it and they don't realize that they have it and and having people that can speak about it is it's so imperative and learning through the process because like the education system they it, it's never been fixed it they just toss people aside uh, the students aside and um they just kind of tuck them away and rather than including them in the education system as part of the curriculum Totally, totally. I invite Tracy actually to to speak on BC at Access. I think we, we should give a little bit of a background of what BC at Access is. Yeah, if you could give everyone a background and, and myself kind of what, what your role is and then Chantel will give me what her role is and then we'll put it all together and yeah, I'm super happy to do that. I am, um, you know, BC at Access, we're kind of, you know, went grassroots to an actual nonprofit and a charity over the course of nearly nine years you know we started out actually as a group that wanted to do a class action lawsuit against the government we sort of learned along the way that that's really hard to do in education because of the way legislation is set up but mm -hmm. we did kind of stay very action oriented so it was a good way to start as a group you know lots of good long-term advocates joined and our main focuses are sharing information on how to make complaints and escalate complaints in the school system. And the purpose of it was really, you know, there's lots of different groups like the ADHD Advocacy Society that are disability specific, but that the barriers in the education system, they're really pretty common for all disabled kids. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to come together and be louder as a big group. And what I find is that between BC at Access and all of these other groups and organizations, it's a much bigger voice and much more powerful. Yeah, it's, and, and that's so important to have your voice heard. Yeah, I think we should tell our own personal stories of of why we are where we are. Yes, yes. Yeah, <laughs> you, well, most you, definitely. You want me to do that first, Chantel? I think so. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. All right. I mean, you know, I, I back up a little bit. I do want to acknowledge, you know, that I'm speaking here from stolen Lekwungen land. And I think that's particularly important. You know, it's always important, but it's important particularly with National Truth and Reconciliation Day tomorrow. And, you know, it has a big impact. Like education is a colonial system, right, that continues to harm Indigenous people. It's not history, it's present. It was designed to exclude. My kids are those kids. I was that kid. I have several disabilities, you know, we, most of us have more than one. I have ADHD and I have autism. I'm autistic. I prefer to say I'm autistic, but whatever people prefer, I have anxiety and a little bit bigger of a list. And my kids, you know, those particular things quite often run in the family and they definitely do for us. All of my kids are autistic. I have three kids. They also have ADHD. Navigating the system was challenging. The main reason that I started BC at Access was because I was frustrated at listening to how our kids were talked about in the media 
And the lack of understanding by media, by government, by the unions, and no voice in there for families or the kids themselves, right? So no voice for disabled people from disabled people. And that's what I think is really cool about this space here. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's there's no urgency on government wanting to uh, to correct things, and many many people um, within the disability community. We mention this a lot uh, about ableist, right? You know, it's an ableist society, right? It's like, well, the disability doesn't affect me. You know, I mean, that's what I hear. You know, well, it doesn't affect me. Well, I said, but it can, and it will. Like, it, it will affect you in one way or another, and and, and that's why it's so imperative having discussions on educating people to make them understand that people are born with disabilities or they may develop more disabilities in life. I mean, they will in one point. There are hidden disabilities that are not prevalent. And it is rightly so that they need to be recognized as who they are. I mean, they are who they are, like lived experience. And and we'll get into talking about a lot more of lived experience. But I mean, those are the people that they know. They know what's best for themselves. They just need the, to be recognized as from the school system, from the government, as we are people, right? Mm-hmm. People that know what's best and they have, like, say, the lived experience of what's, uh, they just need that extra, like, the, the tool to kind of work with them, right? Right. They need to be believed. Yes. You know, yes. they need to be Absolutely. heard and believed. Like, yeah. I find that there's a bit of the soft bigotry of low expectations. Yes. Kind of like, you know, a lot of times what will happen is that, oh, oh, you have a disability? Oh, well, then we can't really teach you. Or we can't really, you kind of don't really fit into the system kind of thing, right? So you either need to change or you need to leave. And we've seen what great things a different mindset can create. And that's what we want to encourage. That's what we want to amplify and get consistently across the board for everybody. Absolutely. I totally, totally agree with you on that. I mean, the system is broken. We just have to, uh, we have to fix it because they don't want to fix it. So we have to fix it for them. Yeah. Chantal, I don't want to talk over top of you, but I was just going to say, I I always have to jump in when people say the system is broken because I don't think it is. I think it's working exactly the way it was designed to work. No, that's that's what I (laughs) mean. It's conveniently, when I said that, I was thinking, no, actually it's it's conveniently broken. It's set up that way as a design. (laughs) A system design, yeah, and I and I'm still learning on that terminology. You know, like it's like like I'd say, well, the system is broken, but it's broken to the point where they've designed it to be intentionally set, where yes. it's convenient for political decision maker, uh, makers or policy makers, where. Well, yeah, there's just no appetite to make that change, and I like to use the terminology kind of as low hanging fruit shall we yeah. say, of yeah. saying, well, you see, we're, we're trying, we're trying, but, you know, keep, we're on the path, but they don't really want to try and change. It takes a great amount of effort and will yeah. uh, to do that. And that's why we are doing what we we can to to really amplify everyone's message, each other's messages. You know, I'll, I'll introduce myself a little bit so people kind of get to know me. You can Google me too, so <laughs> that's there too, but... <laughs> I'm an ADHD person whose mind is all over the place and I, I do a lot of million different things. I never sit still. Some people ask me like, do you have a little too much on your plate? I'm like, but I love all of it. <laughs> it's all of my hyper focus. And so that's why I, I do what I do. I also have children who are neurodivergent and who have their own disabilities as well. That's what set me on the path to meeting Tracy and the amazing thousands of families that we've been able to connect with in this province and heck across the world in the disability community to to come together and like reach each other reach out and hold each other's hands and say you know what we're going to do this and we're going to be louder and louder and louder and we're going to make change because you know it Mm -hmm. needs to happen like we can't stay the way we are we have to change like the change has to happen from within and and expands out, right? Um, yeah, because th- obviously the, uh, the nothing's going to happen unless we grassroots we we form a an alliance and we push out and we say enough. Like we have to change it. We all saw this. Tracy saw this. We we've been talking for years about this. How ADHD is really not recognized. Kind of like the misunderstood 
problem children almost. And I hate to use that term, but that's yeah. what we're, we're regarded as, you know, especially in the, in the younger years. And if we're not helped and we're not supported in our younger years, and we don't have that privilege of the good home and, and, and all of that, those other things that come with that, our success is very much, our outcomes are not as good. You know, I can throw out statistics about what the outcomes are and they're not good. Children need support now. We need mm -hmm. to be preventative now so that we don't have these problems into the future. And that's what BC at Access is all about. That's what ADHD Advocacy Society is all about. That's what all these other disability organizations are about is really targeting to the youth. And then and as an adult, a late diagnosed adult for ADHD, I'm also now seeing the adults and we look back on our childhoods and we see like, oh my gosh, if I'd have just had this, if I'd have just had that, I would have been so much more successful. School system, they didn't have a lot of teacher's assistance, right? Back then yes. they yeah. started cutting that back and um, they really didn't really keep up with the demand of, of uh, working with students who had different barriers. And and the word barriers, I, I wanted uh, you, both your views on, on that word barriers. Some people like the word barriers, other ones don't. They just, some people use the word obstacles. What is your both view on that to the word? I mean, do you like the word barriers or I don't know? I mean, some of these people, um, they, you know, like governments will talk about the word barriers. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I'm actually fairly neutral until you just said that. Now I'm like, yeah. hmm, yeah. let me think about that. I don't know. Yeah, How about yeah I know. It, yeah, a, it's a topic I, that kind of comes up every Same. so often, right? It's, uh, so who yeah. objects to it? Is it disabled people who yeah, maybe yeah, would yeah, prefer to use a different word? Yeah, I um, yeah, I come across that every so often. And I oh, there wow. are some disabled people that they don't like the word barriers. I'll say, well, that's like a roadblock. Or I just say, um, you know, they're, they're just a person with a disability. I, yeah. I like to say it that way because it, it's um, it's more of who they are rather than yeah. what the system. Like the systemic one is called the word barriers. I think it's a fancy word that um, mm -hmm. they'll put uh -huh. out there. And that's what, I, that's what I'm picking up on is like a fancy oh. word. Well, let's yeah. call it a barrier. Let's, let's, let's knock down barriers. Well, why? What why barriers? Knock down barriers? Yeah. Like yeah. Why, why knock them down? I mean, that's like knocking the person down. Yeah. You know? Mm. Yeah. See, oh, I, I, I never thought of it point. that way. Yeah. No, I really, I appreciate this. This is, I learned yeah. something new in so many spaces and language yes. always changes, mm -hmm. right? Yep. You know, the, the, I, the words we used to use, we don't use anymore and it's always going to change. So I'm always open I, um, to change. Well, I yeah. actually came up with, uh, I used to have a lot of townhouse, town hall meetings with the ministers and stuff and, and they'd come up and they'd talk about the word barriers. I go, why, why are you using the word barriers? Why, why um, housing barriers or, or maybe we can find different ways of adaptive stuff for people with disabilities. I used to keep kind of on and on about it. And like picking away at them, right? And they didn't really yeah. want to answer that or didn't know how to. Yeah. I knew they knew, but it's all about the system. The system mm -hmm. is really systemic barriers, not the personal yes. barriers. But the government will spin it around the other way because all they want to think, well, how do we remove the barriers? But meaning what, what they're actually saying is how do how we, do, how do we remove our, our own barriers within yeah. the government? But they don't yeah. want to admit that. They never want to admit that. It's like riddles, yeah. eh?